is Dr. Brian Prax. Dr. Prax received his degree in chiropractic medicine in 1996. He is board certified in integrative medicine and holds a diploma in neuropathy from the American College of Physical Medicine. So he is also certified by the American Functional Neurology Institute as a specialist in functional neurology. He has also hosted a radio show called Vitality Now on WRNA and has had several interviews on TV and is also the, the sorry, and is also the author of the book entitled Reversing Neuropathy, Making the Impossible Possible. So all of that aside, Dr. Prax is most passionate about sharing his knowledge to help people reverse their neuropathy. Dr. Prax is here to give you a lot of great information and will answer many of your questions during this presentation. I, as well as other staff, will be around to help guide you through throughout all today's process. With that said, I'm going to turn things over to Dr. Brian Prax. All right, everybody, hold down the applause. All right, thank you, thank you. I am super excited to be here today. My goal today is to help you guys. You're either here because you have this terrible affliction called neuropathy, or you know somebody that has it. One way or the other, you will get help today. Are we gonna fix it all today? Probably not, but you're gonna have solutions. You're gonna have answers. Right off the bat, I wanna let you know that I'm board certified in neuropathy, and all that means is that's all I do, you guys. I do neuropathy. I had a patient ask me just uh, yesterday, how many cases have you actually done? We calculated it's at least a thousand. That's not just people who came in and like consulted with me, that's cases that I've taken from beginning to end. Having said that, we have an 85 to a 90% success rate. So I'm just gonna pull back the curtain and run the math with you. That means we have a 10 to a 15% failure rate. I'm gonna be honest with you, it's not easy to reverse neuropathy, but if there's nothing else that you get, and I want you to write this one thing down, neuropathy is reversible, it is possible. At least we start that with the headset. Oh, I also wanted to let you know that this seminar is gonna run four and a half hours long. So are you guys doing okay on time? You know, I'm just kidding. It's gonna be 37 minutes and nine seconds. I got myself on a timer, okay? So I gotta time myself. So just sit back and put your seat belts on. It's gonna be about 30 minutes long. You should have brought the chin. <laughs> we have plenty of space here and it's well air conditioned. So I'm really excited today because today is the first time in almost two and a half years that I've been able to personally stand in front of an audience and give this webinar, or see, now I'm so used to saying webinars. I've been hiding behind the camera and inside of your, inside of your uh, computers doing webinars for the last two and a half years, and I'm excited to finally be out and be in front of a real person, so I'm really happy to be here. Now, I'm not bragging or anything at all, but I said I promise you I'm gonna get you help. These books are for sale, and I don't want you to think, oh, he's trying to sell his books. I'm not here to peddle books, I'm here to help. They're 1997, you can get them on Amazon. If you wanna buy a copy at the front, buy a copy. It's called Reversing Neuropathy, I wrote it. I've heard, got some good feedbacks, but of course, I'm biased. So I wrote the book, it's here for you guys, okay? Uh, I think I covered everything. Oh, I have other things I want you to think about or write down as well. I have over 5,000 subscribers on a YouTube channel that's dedicated almost exclusively for neuropathy. Why do I share that with you? Not to pat myself on the back, it's all chock full of decent, really good information that you can take about what we do here in the clinic to reverse neuropathy. An example, I do a video on those vibration platforms. You can get those vibration platforms for $250 on Amazon. It's I find it to be helpful. It stimulates, it helps the nerves, it helps with the pain. That's an example of one of the, uh, one of the many, I think I have over four or 500 videos on how to help yourself with neuropathy. You just look me up. Brian Prax, Neuropathy, mm -hmm. go to YouTube. I also, uh, I also manage a support group, it's through Facebook. So if you're the type that wanna be in a support group, there's lots of other people that are like you or people that you know who have neuropathy and they help each other and I'm getting on and offering advice as well. So I hope you feel like you're being helped. That's my job, neuropathy support group. At the end of this seminar, I almost said webinar, at the end of this seminar, I will be offering an opportunity to work with us. It's a greatly, I'll just tell you now, it's a greatly reduced offer, an exam fee that's dropped significantly low. 
If you want to take me up on it and it makes sense, sign up. If you don't, then don't. If you're here just for info, you're in the right place. We're not pushy people, okay? And what's that, hon? I said I'm here for food. All right. <laughs> so we're going to go to the next one because the timer's at 34 minutes, so I'm doing good. So that's me. I crossed it off, but I want, I want to ask you, how would you like to get relief, lasting relief from pain, burning, numbness, and tingling from this condition called neuropathy? That's a dumb question. Of course I want that. I crossed off relief because I'm not here to relieve your symptoms. Gabapentin is going to do that for you. Or it won't. Lyrica, she's like, mm, not me, okay. Lyrica, gabapentin, Tylenol, Aleve, all of these things are designed to band-aid your symptoms. That's not what the book is about, and that's not what this seminar is about. We're not here to relieve your symptoms, make you feel better for four hours. We're here to see if we can literally reverse it, and that's what I'm teaching today. How can it be done? And if that's all you get is that, I don't even know it could be done. It can? If that's all you get, like it's possible. You can read on our wall of fame a number of people, this is just a smattering of them, but a number of people who were you where you are and who went all the way through and got it fixed. 100%? All of them? All the time? No. But what if you could get only 50% of your symptoms to go away? Would you be happy with just half your symptoms gone? Yeah, amen, right? So, and some of them are 100%. We had one just yesterday. I'm not here to relieve. We're just going to see if we can reverse this thing. So let's talk about how is that even possible? Because I tell you what, if you're not skeptical, at least a little skeptical that it's reversible, I'd question you. Really? Haven't you heard from your doctors that neuropathy is irreversible? That there's nothing that can be done? You're just getting older. Learn to live with it. That's what people come in and they tell me. And that's why I titled the book, Making the Impossible Possible. All I want you to get is that it is possible. It is possible. That's what you need to get. If one other human could make it happen, that means it's possible for you. Here's one of the most important humans in my life, and that was my mom. She contracted a condition called Lou Gehrig's disease, ALS. It's horrible. It's a central neuropathy that affects the brain and then eventually causes peripheral neuropathy that affects the extremities. She was literally bed bound and before that wheelchair bound, but the doctors gave her six months. With the therapies and the things that we teach, we were able to get her six quality years before she finally succumbed. That was back in 2010 and that's when I started my quest for mom and I couldn't save her, okay? Lou Gehrig's is a real tough one, I couldn't save her. But that's what really spurred this whole thing into what is this thing called neuropathy? We were able to do it for thousands of people and I hope maybe just one more, maybe six more, seven, I don't know, however many people I can. But it all started out with mom. So what, can one of you guys get me a glass of water? I forgot to bring it in. So listen, what would a neuropathy, peripheral neuropathy seminar be without a definition? We need to define it. You don't have to be a rocket scientist or a board certified neurologist to understand what it is. Watch, peripheral. The nervous system, we like to split it up to make it simple for our minds. This complex thing that nature gave us, we like to split it up. But really think about it. Anything that's in the center as far as the nervous system goes, thank you so much. Anything that's in the center, we're gonna call that the central nervous system. <coughs> that's pretty basic, pretty simple. That would be the brain and the spinal cord. If there's a problem with that, like Lou Gehrig's or MS or a stroke, well, we're gonna call that a central neuropathy, because it's in the center. All right, what's neuropathy? Neuro, nerve, apathy, a problem with. Pretty basic, simple stuff, okay? We just like to put Latin words on it. So, take a guess. What do you think the peripheral nervous system would encompass? Hands and feet. Hands and feet. And more specifically, any nerves that leave the center and go to the periphery. Arms, hands, toes, feet, fingers. That would be the peripheral nervous system. Okay? So break it down. The peripheral nervous system is going to be a problem with the nerves that are in the peripheral nervous system, the outside nerves. Sciatica, how many people know what that is? Mm -hmm. 
pain down the back, down the butt, down the leg. Is that part of the peripheral nervous system? Yes, that's a peripheral neuropathy. It's under the umbrella. Carpal tunnel syndrome. That affects the median nerve. She says me. That affects the median nerve. That's a nerve that's in the peripheral nervous system. That's a peripheral neuropathy. Diabetic peripheral neuropathy. Jeez, Katie. Cancer. Okay. Cancer drugs. Katie, okay. Chemotherapy affects the peripheral nervous system. But you, I think you're getting the idea. These nerves here and there, you got a problem with them. Pretty simple. Now there's a hundred different causes to this, and we'll go over a few of those, but we've got to start detecting what's the problem. If we know what's causing it, then if we can go, if we can go after the cause, then we may be able to do something for that, okay? So that's the peripheral nervous system. Now what about, by definition, you guys are getting smart now, what about the nerves that leave the brain and go all the way down and control the heart? Peripheral nervous system, central nervous system. What do you think? <coughs> Anything that leaves the brain or the spinal cord is part of the peripheral nervous system. So there's even nerves that leave the back here and go to the heart and even the stomach. Some that leave here and go to the, the intestines or the, or the male female reproductive organs. Those are by definition peripheral nervous system. So genital problems, erectile dysfunction, high blood pressure, digestive issues, those could be a part of the peripheral nervous system, or they are part of the peripheral nervous system, that could be part of your peripheral neuropathy, wow. not just hands, feet. So now we're getting people like, oh, 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 well, we're connecting some dots. Hey, we're just defining things so far, right? Nothing, nothing rocket scientist. So what happens with the peripheral nerves? Most often, it's a circulation problem, right? So loss of blood flow causes nerve damage. So watch. This is the way, and this is with a microscope. We're looking into a microscope right here. We're seeing a nerve that is microscopic, and around that it has microcirculation, little teeny tiny capillaries that innervate that, that make sure it gets blood flow to those. Well, when those blood, when those blood vessels start to fail, or they get ill or diseased, okay, from a number of different conditions, they shrivel. The nerves don't get oxygen or glucose or any of the vitamins that these, that these blood vessels carry, so guess what? They're gonna shrivel and die. Well, I know you know this already, but how do you think that feels? Yeah, it could be pain and it could be numbness, and it could be both at the same time. And for those who don't have neuropathy, like how's that possible? How could you have numbness and pain at the same time? Yeah, and I also have tingling, and it feels like the sock is balled up underneath my foot, and I'm stepping on cardboard, and I got gravel in my shoes, but like I really frost, don't. Like you're frostbitten, like you're frostbitten, too. Yeah, frostbitten, like, is that terrible? I've had that before, frostbite, it's really it's bad. Like she can get like seriously dirt. bad. Yes, stop pitching on your toes. Yeah, mm -hmm. like socks all bunched up, or it's any of that stuff. That's mm -hmm. why I wrote it on that form. You'll notice that on the second page. So we need to start looking at causes of this. Is gabapentin going to fix this? No. It's a band-aid. It's covering up the symptoms. So let's go over causes. There's 102 known causes of neuropathy. We used to say 100. Number 101 is COVID. Well, actually not really because COVID would fall under infections. That's a known cause. COVID itself is a known cause of peripheral neuropathy. So is the COVID vaccine. That's 102. I've had cases of COVID vaccine-induced neuropathy. I'm not saying don't vaccinate, I'm just saying that's a known cause. We just have to know what the cause is. The number one for sure is diabetes. 30% of all neuropathies are from diabetes. There's still 60% left, 70% of other causes, so we'll talk about that. Katie said already, chemo. Chemo is a known cause of neuropathy. One of the tools that we use is one of the tools that the Cancer Centers of America uses the Augusta Cancer Center, I just heard, uses the same tool to help with chemo-induced neuropathy. We're gonna share that, I'm gonna show that to you. Poor circulation we talked about. And we did say this, back herniated disc, spinal stenosis. What was that one that I said earlier? Sciatica. Sciatica, okay, that's a cause. Okay, so we need to look at, some, maybe there's a herniated disc. Surgeries, back surgeries, hip replacement surgeries, even knee surgeries can irritate a peripheral nerve and cause that. Autoimmune conditions, we already caught, talk, covered uh, infections. Alcohol abuse, 
I have a 24 year old who just started the peripheral neuropathy program. Alcohol abuse. Well, hey, I don't care how great my tools are. If you don't stop the offending activity, we're going to be wasting some money, right? So uh, can you stop drinking alcohol? If he says no, I'm like, well, call me when, you, when you're ready. If you're not ready, we're not going to fix it. We're not going to fix it. Many medications, several medications. We'll cover that in a second. But antibiotics like Cipro is one of them. Okay. Uh, others in the floral quinolone category can cause them. Other ones that you'd be surprised at. Statins. Cholesterol-lowering medications can cause it. <clears throat> One of the cases that I cured early on was a statin-induced neuropathy. I said, go back and check with your doctor and see if it might be a cause. She got off it for 30 days, the neuropathy was fixing itself. Not all of them, but, and not all people respond differently, so don't go throwing your drugs away. I'm not saying that. You gotta do a careful case study. Liver disease, kidney disease, thyroid, and many more, but the key is we gotta, oh, there's one on here that you, some of you have heard already. Is this where I get, what about Guillain-Barre? Can you help with idiopathic neuropathy? Has anybody ever heard of idiopathic neuropathy? It means we don't know the causes. My joke for that one is the idiots don't know what the cause is. And many times I'm an idiot. I don't know what the cause is. Sometimes we don't know what it is. It's not diabetic, no chemotherapy, there's no pinched nerve. Well, I don't know. We have a protocol for that. We've got a protocol. It's casting a wide net, basically. And more. You've got to watch out for the more. So what are your choices? Number one is we could just say, just do nothing, okay? Nothing, I'm just gonna try and live with it. That's what my doctor suggested. Just go ahead and learn to live with it. Well, you can do that, that's what you've been doing, okay? Or you could go to your primary doc and you could say, dog, it's killing me. I've got frostbite in my feet, okay? It feels like rats are chewing on my toes. Ants are crawling up my legs, I've heard of all those things. And your doctor would say, hmm, sounds like you have neuropathy. I'm gonna give you, anyone? Gabapentin. Gabapentin. It's the go-to. An off-label drug. It's, a, it's, an, it's an epileptic seizure medication that's used off-label that seems to help. I want you to know this. Write it down. Gabapentin will not help with numbness or tingling. If you have numbness and tingling only and no pain, you're wasting your time and probably killing some brain cells. Now, Gabapentin will help out with burning pain and frostbite pain. That, if you have that, Gabapentin can help with that. Not for, not for numbness though, it's not gonna help. That's what your doctor will do, and if you come back six weeks later and you're like, it's still hurting, well, it's up the dose. Still hurting, I'm gonna send you to a neurologist. The neurologist is gonna run the alphabet, right? We're gonna get the MRI, the ABC, the QOL, we're gonna get all kinds of different things, okay? You're gonna run all these tests, and they're gonna come back and say, I found it. Oh, thank God. What is it? You have peripheral neuropathy. It's idiopathic. You tell all my friends, what does that mean? We don't know what the cause is, but you have it. So what are you gonna do? Well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you gabapentin. Ah, my doctor already did that. Well, I'm gonna up the dose. Ah, my doctor already did that. Not a problem, we're gonna give you Lyrica. Well, that's just a cousin of gabapentin. It's just a different color band-aid, okay? And it might help with the symptoms. If you're happy with that and you're feeling fine and you're satisfied, well then keep doing it. Don't come in through my program, but that's something, those are the choices that, you have, that you're left with at this point. Okay. So the conventional uh, approach, of course, is that you're trying, you're trying to just get people to feel better. I don't have a problem feeling good, I like feeling good. Just know that you're not gonna fix it. Some cases, like with, let's just say, um, let's say an infection. You go to the dentist, you have an infection, I had one. Okay, prescribes antibiotics. I want you to take these antibiotics three times a day for three weeks, and then that, that's gonna fix it. Well, you, you, do, you have a problem, here's the solution, you take that solution, you're done. You don't stay on antibiotics for all your life because it fixes it. Well, gabapentin is like that. That's like taking Tylenol, it's just gonna cover your symptoms. I think you got that, right? It's you're never gonna medicate your way out of this one, all right? But there's dangers. All medications, including gabapentin, and also called Neurontin, have side effects. So look at these. This is um, things that we see on a regular basis. The things I see on a regular basis are balance problems, balance problems, that's seeing double, dizziness, balance problems, drowsiness and fatigue, balance problems. You should watch driving a car if you're on this stuff. Fatigue, 
I hear edema, the swelling in the legs, you see that a lot with uh, neuropathy, um, and weight gain. Those are, those are the ones we typically see here. Let's go on to other side effects. So other side effects include, I see this a lot. I feel like a zombie when I'm taking that gabapentin. I can't think straight. I forget what I'm doing. I forgetfulness, joint pain, uh, cognitive dysfunction, right? Can't put two thoughts together, confusion, and look at that, neuropathy. You look it up, you just Google it. It'll say burning, tingling, and numbness of the extremities. Isn't that what I'm taking it for? So these medications can actually cause the very thing or add to the very thing that it was prescribed for. So Lyrica is a cousin. It's the newest member of the family. It's also an a, 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 a seizure, epileptic, yeah, that's it. It's an anti-epileptic medication. It's for seizures. It's, it's FDA approved for seizures, but not for peripheral neuropathy. But they can use it off-label. They can do whatever they want, use this drug for that or whatever. It's not a problem. It's just not FDA approved. But it has all of these side effects, and this is the number one thing that I see here, weight gain on Lyrica. I see that a lot. Um, also, the thought, the thought things, maybe some suicidal, not necessarily suicidal, I don't see as much, but I see cognitive thinking, not, not able to think clearly with, with Lyrica. But there's good news, there is hope. We've been hearing a lot about NIH, the National Institute of Health, and I myself have seen this exact thing. This is important. Peripheral nerves have the ability to regenerate as long as the underlying nerve cell has not been killed. Well, that's some pretty basic stuff, but we find the same to be true. Same exact thing as your house plant or the plant outside. If you go on vacation and forget to water it, and the shades are drawn for two weeks and you come back and you see that thing all bent over and messed up laying on the floor with all kinds of leaves that are brown. Hey, if you hadn't killed it and you give it what it needs, what can happen? It can come back. You guys, I just gave you the program. It, you're just like a plant. We just need to make sure you haven't killed it too much. Because if you killed that plant too far, you know, maybe Jesus or somebody else could bring it back, but nobody, nobody on this earth that I know of can. Okay? So as long as you haven't killed it, they say, and for us, what we find an NIH and us true, if it's 85% damage or more, it might be too far gone. 85% or more. How do I know? I've never had that study. Well, we actually have a study that comes out of Toronto you want to know it's the Toronto Clinical Scoring Evaluation and this test is going to give us your severity score. If it's 85 or 84 or less there's a good chance we can bring these nerves back just like a plant. Oh and just like that plant analogy imagine if 85 percent of it is totally damaged and we can still bring it back. It might not be as pretty as it was before but you can still bring it back and that might be the same for your nerves. That's so why I said early on, what if, what if only 50% of your symptoms and condition improved? Would you be happy with that? I can't predict what it will be, but as long as it's not killed, it can come back just like a plant or really any other living thing. So the proven uh, holistic and natural approach is a three-pronged approach. Metabolic, which is how your innards are working, like how your digestion, your inflammatory process, your hormones, digestion, the immune system, how all that's working. I'll show you how we approach that. Circulation, just like my plant analogy, if you're trying to bring it back but the hose is kinked, I don't care how much fertilizer you put in there, how much sun you give it, it's not gonna get, a, it's not gonna get the solution. And then you gotta do something to rebuild the nerves. I'm gonna share that with you. The good news is, is that nature gave your body the ability to self-heal, just like that plant. Isn't that a beautiful thing? You're a self-healer. That's the program. I help your body to do what it's already trying to do. Something's in the way, though. Something's standing in the way, so we've got to get that thing out of the way, and we've got to let your body heal itself. That's the beauty of the program. Nature, nature knows what it's doing. So metabolism, you are what you eat. Now look at this, you guys. A little piece of chocolate right there. We can have chocolate on this program. That's exciting. We, it's good food. If you're trying to bring dead nerves back, you got to know that you are what you eat. If you're eating crappy food, 
you're probably going to get crappy results. So if, you, if you're one of those people like, well, I've been eating this way for 77 years, I'm not about ready to change now. Well, then you're probably not about ready to get out of this condition you find yourself stuck in. You are what you eat, so let's let's have a conversation about that. That's that's not too outlandish, right? We need to make sure we feed those nerves. It's, it's the water and it's the uh, and it's the, uh, the the fertilizer we give to a plant. Gotta have good soil. There is a Nobel Prize winning molecule called nitric oxide. You can write it down and Google it if you want. Nitric oxide. Here's the beauty of it. Number one, you can't find it in a store. You're not going to be able to purchase nitric oxide. Dang it. That's because your body makes it. And we haven't been able to figure out how to put it in a, in a capsule or a vitamin. But it's stimulated by the right kind of light. This is infrared therapy. Infrared light therapy stimulates the release of nitric oxide. Who cares? Nitric oxide is actually increasing circulation. So if you got the owie here in the feet, we got the damaged nerves in the feet, we get the, nitric, we get the nitric oxide release by putting the infrared lights on the, on the feet. Maybe you have it in the hands. We're going to get it on the hands. We've got to get good circulation. That's the tool that we use. That is the Nobel Prize winning molecule. This is how we help your body to stimulate nerve growth. Okay? It's called the... Uh, the peripheral neuropathy rehab therapy is what they use at the Cancer Centers of America and apparently Augusta Cancer Center as well. There's a little electronic device that stimulates the nerves in the way they need to be stimulated. Stimulates the nerves so they respond by growing. Did you know you could grow new nerves? Anybody play crossword puzzles? Sudoku, learn a new language. If you broke your right arm and only used your left hand, would you be able to would you be able to get pretty good at your left hand if you were not dominant on that side? You would. How's that? Muscles improve? Nope. The nerves from the brain there improve. You can actually build new brain cells. Just play Sudoku a lot and you'll just you'll improve. You'll become more efficient. Learn do crossword. Learn a new language. You'll you will build whatever you whatever you stimulate. Well, this happens to stimulate the peripheral nerves, and those will grow too. Guys, see, there is hope. You actually can grow new nerves and get out of this thing called neuropathy. I always think this is a good question. Well, this all sounds good. How come my doctor, how come my neurologist doesn't know about this? It's a good question. So first thing is that medical students receive less than 20 hours of nutritional education over four to eight years of schooling. They just don't get it. What are they getting instead? Pharmaceutical surgery, diagnosis. Okay. Good stuff to know, but they just don't get nutritional information. They receive no education on alternatives. They just receive education on gabapentin and Lyrica. And doctors, they basically, myself included, we practice what we're trained to practice. And they, they are trained to give drugs to treat your symptoms. I'm not bashing anybody, that's just their training, that's what they're good at. But if I break my arm, I want drugs, I want surgeries, that's what they're really good at. But you're not gonna be able to medicate yourself out of this. And the Medicare guidelines, 2251.3, you can look it up, but here's what it says. This is also why doctors don't do neuropathy. Medicare, you gotta love Medicare. Right out of their guidelines, it says a treatment plan that seeks to prevent disease promote health and prolong and enhance the quality of life, sounds pretty good so far, or a therapy that's performed to maintain or prevent deterioration of a chronic condition is deemed not medically necessary. Don't you just want to choke someone? You know, and I just think Medicare isn't really interested in adding new people. There's, there's 30 million Americans that have this peripheral neuropathy a year. They're not interested in paying for more things. What's odd is that I've helped reverse mu multiple cases of diabetes, you know, thereby probably keeping people out of wheelchairs, medication, surgeries, amputations, ramps, all the things that Medicare will pay for. They'll pay for all of those things, including ramps and, and CNAs to come at home and care for people and all, and cover all that, but they don't cover anybody, not, not only just myself, but medical doctors, they don't cover them to fix it saving them hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, not to mention the suffering. And that's why, because diabetes is a chronic condition and so is peripheral neuropathy. 
So if we want to get it fixed, you guys, you're not going to be able to get it fixed in the Medi Medicare paradigm. We're going to have to step out. We're going to have to step out of the box. Frustrating. So we said we had choices. We got do nothing, try to live with it. Try, try to get some help with your primary doctor. Get up to a neurologist, or there's a fourth one. And this is what I was promising. See if we can qualify you for our blueprint to neuropathy program. I love it, it's a blueprint. There's 400 other doctors, medical doctors, chiropractors, DOs, and other doctors across the states who are using this blueprint to neuropathy program. We have an 85 to a 90% success rate across the states. You have to see if you qualify. How do I qualify? Well, first of all, you have to, we have to make sure that your sensory exam isn't showing greater than an 85% loss of the nerves or higher. NIH already says, and I found that, if it's too far gone, it's too far gone. You wouldn't qualify. On the other end of the spectrum, I have some people that are too good for the program. Maybe you just need some exercises or stretches or maybe a little bit. Maybe I think that you should check with your doctor. One of your medications is interfering and causing some problems. So that was that one patient that I should, she didn't go through the program. I sent her back to her doctor. So if you're in the middle of not too good, but also not too bad, and you're in, you're in my wheelhouse, then there's an 85 to a 90% prognosis. But you gotta see if you qualify. We do an exam, we do the Toronto Clinical Exam, which is the sensory score, to see if you're within that wheelhouse. So I like that. So who should be evaluated, right? So who should be evaluated? Well, if you have one of these multitude of symptoms. So I picked nine, but there's probably 30 that I, I brought them up already. But the classics, burning, tingling, and numbness, if you have that, you probably have neuropathy. I should put the number one thing. If you've already been diagnosed with neuropathy, you should probably schedule for an exam. Cramping, I hear a lot. Sharp electrical or frostbite-like pain, like what Katie was saying. That's a good. That's a good one. Restless leg often goes along with this. Okay, balance. Well, that's just a quick side seminar. If you can't feel your feet, how in the world is the brain supposed to know where you are and how you're supposed to balance in this world? So balance and falling uh, top, uh, in the top 10. Foot pain, or I should say also foot numbness or foot tingling, if it's waking you up, that's a sign you should probably get it checked out. And then we just lump everything else into weird. Frostbite, uh, gravel in my shoes, feels like I'm stepping on cardboard, I got leather underneath there, my fingers are tingling, I got numbness, like those other weird, I'm wearing a glove, my socks bunched up, like those sort of things are weird symptoms, okay? You probably have those as well. So if you have one of those nine or multitude of symptoms or you've been diagnosed, what I would suggest is get the sensory evaluation to see how bad it is. If you haven't been tested with that one yet, I'm pretty sure. So what's next? So this is just imagining as we are still within my time, it's doing awesome. So I like this, just a little bit of dreaming. We can meditate, we can think on this, but imagine sleeping through the night peacefully. Don't laugh, it could happen. We're just dreaming. We're just dreaming for a second. Just dreaming through, okay? Imagine walking with confidence and feeling steady again. Wow, being able to navigate your world. Just dreaming. Taking trips and enjoying family outings. Not having to be that burden on people, right? I had somebody the other day saying that. Everybody plans their day around mom. Whether mom can do it or not, sometimes she just has to sit at home. Being able to go out with those, those uh, family members. Feeling like you're 10 years younger, buying some time back in your life. So we do a 16 point neuropathy severity exam. For those of you who wanna take it to the next level. You took the first two levels, you saw an ad, you called up, you came in, that's three steps. You took three steps already. You're here. If you're satisfied with where you're at right now, I've, I've fulfilled my goal. If you want to take it to the next level, then you would schedule for the neuropathy severity exam. It takes us about a half an hour to do that. We actually have availability of doing four spots today because of my case manager and myself, we can do them simultaneously. Somebody might have to wait a little bit, but while, while we're doing exams on two of them, the other, the other folks will be filling out paperwork. It always works out well. But that would be really to determine the extent of your nerve loss uh, and to see whether we can help or not. Can we help? I don't know. I just live by the golden rule. If I don't think I can help, we're not gonna accept you, 
okay? As sad as that is, and I have had like two of those last week, and it's terrible. It feels horrible to me. But we need to see how bad it is. So what we do, the first thing is we do a comprehensive consultation. And I just want you to know this. I believe that God gave us two ears and one mouth because we should listen twice as much as we should talk. I know I've been talking the whole time, and this is a teaching seminar, but that's what the consultation is. I will read every single thing you write down, and I will listen to exactly how this is affecting your day and your night. Somebody's got to sit down and listen, really listen. So that's what we do during the consultation. And then the next part, is, and this is, this is uh, my case manager's part, the next part is my part. I come in and I'm actually going to do this comprehensive examination. It's the neuropathy severity exam. We're going to run tests on your feet and your hands if that's applicable. We're going to compare it to other areas of your body and we'll be able to decipher and come up with a number. How bad is it? Okay. You're telling me it's really bad. No, I can even get a number on it. So we'll get a number with that. And so this is done, this would be done today. If you want to do it today, if you need to schedule for another time, it's totally fine. That would be done on the exam day. And then on a follow-up day, we do a report of findings. That's where I report how bad your neuropathy is. We found 62% loss of the nerves, 85, 16, whatever it is. And from that, I would recommend X, Y, and Z. Here's your recommendation. That would be the recommendation day, the solution day. And that's on a separate day. Now, when I show you what the price is and offer you the seminar special, just know that seminar special includes all the, all the two visits. So it's just one price, all visits, everything's included. Okay. I think that's next. It's normally 287 If you were to see a neurologist at UVA or Martha Jefferson, that's going to be well in excess of that, just based on the complexity, the severity, and time. It's more like 500 but that's what we charge. Today, we're offering it for 87 yeah. Oops, a, gift, a gift for watching the webinar, a gift for watching me today and learning, is we're literally offering it for 87 Two different appointments. The first one can either be done today or next time, at your, whatever works best for you. Then a follow-up visit where I go over the report of findings where I report my solutions to you. Okay, so I have a couple more slides and I'm doing well. There's a ton of these on YouTube. But these are just three examples. This guy right here is a carpenter. He had it bad in his hands. Imagine working with drills and saws and you can't even really feel what's going on. Like, I'm afraid I'm going to cut the wrong thing. But uh, tingling, almost gone. By the time he was done with the program, it was gone. I haven't seen him in a year. Didn't need to come in. Fixed it. Uh, this guy was a firefighter. Um, and as a captain, he could no longer go out and fight fires. Couldn't even drive the truck. So he's still doing his thing, but he was concerned about his job. He's back on the fire truck and doing his thing. So we have a ton of those as well. This guy lost closer to 50 pounds when he was done. That was about midway through the program. So I'm pretty much done here. Cynthia's gonna help out, but these are some questions to think about. And it goes, if not now, when? When are you gonna take, finally take a look into this? I'm offering a totally different approach. You could choose to check it out and see if we can help you and decide to move on and, and not get help or decide I'm going to go for it. But the choice is always yours. The first or the next step would be let me get the exam and see what he finds. Then the next step after that is that makes sense. Let me go forward and do the program. That doesn't make sense, but you always will have choices. And I like that. What if? What if you could be the next gal or guy up here or up on our wall of fame what if you could start telling your friends how well you've done and how you lost 20 or 30 pounds and how your diabetes is reversing and you can sleep through the night we're just dreaming but what if what if that's possible it is possible okay so the sensory exam you get what the next step is is you would schedule the exam as i said we're totally fully staffed right now we're fully staffed right now we could do it today we can do it today, or we could schedule it for a time that better fits your schedule. We can do up to four today. That's probably the max that we'll be able to do. Or we can schedule it for, the, I don't think we're, I'll let the staff figure out when we have appointments. Uh, oh, the, 80, the 87, if you want that special, I know that question is, well, what if I want to think about it? Of course you can think about it. I said I'm easy going. 
It's $287. Anytime you want to give me a call, it's, it's $287. I promise you'll get your value out of that. If you decide to schedule, schedule today, you pay the $87 and you lock in that price. It's easy. Okay? So if you want to schedule it and pay today, it's $87. You can get it as early as next week or tomorrow, whatever, whenever we have time. If you were interested and you want to get started today, then it's $87 and we'll do it today. Okay? Now I know there's going to be a lot of questions. And all those questions are almost always individual. Can you take care of Guillain-Barre? What about idiopathic? I have diabetes. If my A1C is 13.6, I have chemotherapy with sick. These are individual questions, and I'm going to be violating HIPAA, right? The privacy agreements if I stand up here and start answering questions. What about Medicare? I already talked to you about that. Do we offer monthly, do we offer payment plans? Yes, we do. Is it affordable? Usually around 130 to 150. Some cases are more, some cases are less. That's about what it ends up being in a month, okay? So we will cover all of that. I'm getting the cart way before the horse, talking finances and all that. I want to thank you guys for your time. You all have been really good. I came in under time. I appreciate you coming to this seminar. It's my first one in almost two and a half years. You guys have been awesome. My team is awesome. They're going to answer any and all questions that you have. We have lots of good snacks we put out for you. We got coffee, we got tea, we got all kinds of stuff. We bought lots of stuff. We were really excited. But at this point, for those who are interested in the exam, what you would do is you would go on up with Cynthia, the gal who brought you back here. Cynthia is going to get you organized for that exam, answer any other uh, pertinent questions you might have. I got to get ready for the exam. I got to get ready for some consultations for tomorrow. So I'm going to excuse myself. Help yourself to the coffee, the tea, the snacks, the water, and ask uh, Cynthia for any other questions you have. Thank you, Doc. Thank you very Thank you. much. You guys were great. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like the content, I would ask you to hit the thumbs up button to like it. You can share it with a friend, subscribe to my channel, and please comment below. I will read it and I will respond. Thank you and have a nice day.